Good evening, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. We want to thank you once again for coming in and allowing us to come into your homes to bring you a word from the Lord. I just want to say thank you, Lord. I want to thank God for what he has done. Thank God for what he is doing right now. And I want to thank God for what he is going to do. We just want to thank and praise God on tonight. Our scripture comes from Isaiah 12, 4 through 6. And it reads, in that wonderful day, you will sing, thank the Lord, praise his name, tell the nations what he has done. Let them know how mighty he is. Sing to the Lord, for he has done wonderful things. Make known his praise around the world. Let all the people of Jerusalem shout his praise with joy. For great is the Holy One of Israel who lives among you. Now our song for tonight is Thank You, Lord. And the words are, I come before you today, and there's just one thing I want to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've given to me, for all the blessings that I cannot see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done in my life. You took my darkness and gave me your light. Thank you, Lord. You took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. I just want to say thank you, Lord. Help us sing thank you, Lord. I come before you today. And there's just one thing that I want to say.
here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Eternal God in heaven, in the name of Jesus of Christ, we come now and we thank you again. We praise you, we honor you, we bless your name. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, bless our lives, bless that nothing comes between us and you as we share and we hear your word. We ask you, Father God, to give us strength, give us hope, even in times like these. Bless us that your word will saturate our hearts and our minds and that we will be better than we were when we got started. So in Jesus' name we pray, and we ask it all. Amen. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. We've come again tonight to look at our final night in chapter four of the book of Philippians and also the final night in looking at the book of Philippians. I don't recall when we got started in the book of Philippians, but it's been a nice, good journey as we have come together over and over again to look at this book. Paul writing this, this epistle from a Romans jail. He messed up in the fact that he, he testified of the goodness of God over and over and over again when those who were Romans told him to stop it. He kept on talking about the goodness of God. Amen. Let me tell you, you better talk about the goodness of God because one thing about it, if you sell out, <laughs> if you sell out and stop talking about the goodness of God, then you don't know where you will end up. Amen. So we thank God. Uh, so whatever you sell out for, that's going to be temporary. But when you look look to God and when you honor God with all that you do and all that you have, then you're in the right area, the right mindset, and you're walking with God. Tonight, our final three verses are found in Philippians chapter 4, verses 21, 22, and 23. Philippians chapter 4, verses 21, 22, and 23. Let me say this. Before I forget to say it, on next week, we're going to sum up all the whole uh, book of Philippians. We've got, we walked through the whole book. We will sum it up, and this is the way we're going to do it. I'm going to ask each of you to go ahead and inbox me two questions per person. Two questions per person. Now, don't ask me any question other than those questions about the book of Philippians. Amen? <laughs> We want to ask questions concerning the book of Philippians and during our time together on next week, we will cover the book of Philippians from verse one of chapter one all the way to verse four, uh, verse number verse number 23 of chapter four. And I want you to go through the Bible and look at your previous lessons. Give me two questions per person. And the way you're going to get it to me, you're going to inbox me, inbox me. And I need you to inbox me. Prior, or right about Monday, no later than Monday, inbox me those questions so I can get ready to answer those questions live on air uh, next week. Amen? So whatever you do, look at the book of Philippians. Follow through the book of Philippians and the lessons that we've already had in the book of Philippians. I need two questions per person. We'll cover those questions live on next week, and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get you some answers on next week. So we've had a great journey as we walk through the book of Philippians. Next week, we will do questions and answers from the book of Philippians. The following week, which we'll get into the second week, will be the second week into July. We're looking to look at the book of Colossians. The book of Colossians. That will be July the 8th. July the 8th. Uh, so after you've eaten all the food that you can eat for the 4th of July, come on back on July the 8th and, and join us as we look at the book of Colossians. The book of Colossians will be our next book uh, starting on July 8th. So tonight we're looking at Philippians 
Philippians chapter 4, verses 21, 22, and 23. Paul is closing out his message to the Philippians. He said, greet every saint in Jesus Christ. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, but especially those who are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. He says, greet every saint in Jesus Christ. Paul is still writing this thank you letter. He's writing this thank you letter to the Philippians church, the church at Philippi, quite a distance from where he's locked up in prison. Many theologians believe that he was on house arrest, but when we look deeply into the text, it's more like a prison arrest in the fact that there were armed guards guarding him. And he ends up talking to us in this chapter tonight he ends the chapter by convincing us that we ought to greet each other in the Lord. Let me just say to you, oftentimes, we don't treat each other right in the Lord. Oftentimes, we do not greet each other right in the Lord. Many times, we greet each other in a very selfish, bigoted, self-centered way. But let me just share with you, Paul ends this, this particular book, this particular chapter, this particular pericope, he ends it by saying, greet every saint in Christ Jesus. You ought to greet each other in a very, very spiritual way. Greet each other in such a way that they feel good about your greetings. You know, some people have a way with words and they can, they can cuss you out and make you feel good about it. We're not talking about that kind of greeting. <laughs> Some people have such a great way with words until they can speak encouraging words and your whole day will change for the better. Paul is saying that's how we ought to greet people in the Lord Jesus Christ. This word greet means to salute. It means to welcome. It means to embrace. This word greets means to enfold with your arms. We do that fellowship a lot at the church. We ought to do it also. We can't do it right now, but we ought to do it in the marketplace. Right now, COVID-19 is running, running rampant. So we've been advised to wear our mask and those things we ought to do. You ought to wear your mask. You ought to put a covering on your face. With nearly 150,000 people dying in the United States of America, wearing a mask is very little for us to do. Are you with me? We ought to wear masks. We ought to keep our distance. We ought not breathe and embrace one another at this junction. It has nothing to do with God. Is God is going to keep us. It has nothing to do with the thought that we're walking in fear and not in faith. We talked about Sunday uh, in our message on Sunday. I talked about the fact that we have to have wisdom mm -hmm. in everything we do. Yes, <laughs> if you see people dying all around you, <laughs> you need to understand you must be wise in what you do. Yes, Stay at home if you have to. Stay from around people if you have to. Because there are people who have actually stayed at home and did all the things right and they still got the coronavirus. How much so should we sacrifice our little good times that we think we're having to prevent endangering ourselves and endangering others? So Paul says here, greet each other. Salute them. Paul is saluting them from a prison. I'm saluting you tonight. I'm greeting you tonight by airwaves. I'm greeting, greeting you tonight by way of social media, Zoom, as well as Facebook Live. I'm greeting you tonight 
from a distance to say to you, God bless you. May God keep you. This is my prayer. Paul says, greet. He says, greet, salute, greet, welcome, embrace, fellowship, enfold each other with the arms. Now this word greet also means farewell. As Paul closes out this book of Philippians, not only is he telling us to greet each other, he's also saying farewell. He's saying goodbye. You see, Paul, Paul thought, Paul thought, and, and, and theologians are very clear with this, Paul thought that since they were letting him preach in prison, allowing him to preach in prison, that he was going to get out of prison and continue to preach. But he had to come to the conclusion, as he writes in the book of, of Timothy, he came to the conclusion that I fought a good fight. I've finished my course yes, and I've kept the faith, the faith. So we understand that Paul has learned to abase and he has learned to abound. Mm -hmm. He has learned to live with a little bit and he has learned to live with a lot. Paul is saying to us today, don't take for granted the period that you are to greet each other mm -hmm. because that period is a very small window. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, sooner or later, the, the mother that you take for granted will be gone. Yes, the child you take for granted will no longer be with you. The parents, the, the, the fellowship that you take for granted with cousins and friends, and sooner or later, those periods will be no more. Paul says, whatever you do, don't, don't take for granted this time that we have together. Share with each other in love. It says, greet every saint. This word saint is, is not those who are perfect as we know they are perfect, but this word saint means those who are consecrated, those who are morally blameless, those who are pure, those who are holy, those who are sacred. I say to you tonight, if you are a Christ and you are, you are sacred, you are set aside, you are holy, you are pure, morally pure, mm -hmm. set aside and sacred for the Lord. Mm -hmm. You ought to be the one that others can look to and say, that person there, his life reflects sacredness. Mm -hmm. His life reflects holiness. He, he's a sacred, holy man, woman, boy, or girl. Paul says, Greet every person that is holy, every person that is pure, every person that is set aside. And the way I want you to greet them, greet them in the name of Christ Jesus. Greet them in the name of Christ Jesus. I tell people when they, when they have a cussing problem, you know, some Christians have cussing problems. I tell people when they have a cussing problem, what you need to understand is cussing if you can't stand at the altar in the church and say it out loud where everybody can hear it, it's cussing. I also tell people whenever you, you cuss, whether you're under pressure or not, what, what you're saying is I have a limited, very limited vocabulary. And when you have a, a, limit, a limited vocabulary, that means I don't know anything else to say, so I'm going to say this. Growing up in Mississippi, we used to walk from Linbar Street over to Gentry Drive next to the Fellowstones house. You see, the Fellowstones had a, had a house, and then they had a, a vacant lot next to the house that his mom and dad allowed us to play football, basketball, baseball on. It was a, it was a big vacant lot. And every now and then, somebody would say a word that they couldn't say before the altar at church. Mr. Fellowstone would kindly walk out the door and say, boy, you better learn how to say hot zickety because you can't be cussing around here. So we have to get to a point where we greet people in the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we ought to have things that Christ would have us to say on our lips, on our yes. tongue, and it ought to come out of our mouths. 
We ought not be guilty of always greeting people in a harsh way. It is taught, it is taught even in the secular world, it is taught that when, when we greet someone, even when we're disciplining them, we ought to start with that which is good. Let them know, I appreciate this, I appreciate this, I appreciate this, I appreciate this. You did this well, this well, and this well. And when you say, but, or however, you erased everything that you've just said. So you don't say, but, and however, what you do say is, let's look and see where you can improve. Mm -hmm. So when we greet people, when we embrace people, when we salute people, when we welcome people, and we say farewell to people, we are to do it in the name of Christ Jesus, and we ought to do it the way Christ would do it. Yes, Philippians says, the book of Philippians reminds us, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. who thought it not robbery to be equal to God, but he laid down his own little cares, mm -hmm. really all of his cares to come to planet earth. He humbled himself to come to planet earth. He left his glorious throne in heaven, came to planet earth he under himself. We have to let this mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus, that he assumed his role as a servant. He didn't, he didn't think too much of himself that he could not humble himself. So we have to humble ourselves in greeting each other. We ought to make sure that we greet the saints, the saints of God. And we want to make sure that we greet them in Christ Jesus. He says, the brethren who are with me greet you. Paul locked up in a prison. He says, even my prison and friends, even my associates, even my colleagues, other prisoners, whether they're here or not, whether they're in Christ or not, they greet you. Whether they are here for the same reason I'm here, they greet you. My colleagues greet you in the name of Jesus. He says, he says, the brethren, those who've been saved, those who are with me greet you. When Paul uses this word in the Bible, uses this word brethren, or brethren or brethren, in short, the brothers, when he used this word brethren, he's saying to us, those who have received Jesus Christ as their personal savior, those brethren greet you also. He's writing a letter to the church at Philippi, the Philippian church, and he's saying to them, number one, I thank you. Number two, I greet you. Number three, I appreciate you. I love you for what you have done. They, you've contributed to my ministry. And even while I'm locked up in prison, you're still supporting my ministry. Mm -hmm. Paul says, thank you. And he says, not only do I appreciate you, the brothers that's locked up in prison with me, they appreciate you too because of your generosity and your support over these years. I have been able to preach to them and many of them have come to Christ. Mm -hmm. You remember Paul says in the book of Philippians, he says, he says there are some who preach for, the, for Christ's sake. There are some who have the right heart when they're preaching. But he says that there are others who are not preaching for the sake of Christ. They are preaching for their own gain. And then he says the third group that are preaching, the third group that are preaching, they are preaching to make me look bad. You see, when somebody's locked up, when somebody's in jail, oftentimes people want to put their, oh man, that's the wrong word to use right now, but put their foot on their neck. Mm -hmm. Want to hold somebody down. When they get you down, they want to hold you down. Paul says there's a group that's preaching. They, they don't, <laughs> they're not preaching for the sake of Christ. They're preaching for their own gain. And not only that, there's another group that's preaching because they want to make me look bad. So look at you, Paul. You're, you're locked up now. We're still preaching. Mm -hmm. It's a sad day when preachers can attack other preachers. It's a sad summation when you have to push somebody else down to make yourself look good. Yeah, 
Paul says that the brethren who locked up in prison with me, the brethren who are walking with me, who are, who are in jail with me, the brethren who are with me greet you also. They, they uh, embrace you also. It says, verse 22, Philippians chapter 4, says, and the saints greet you. All the saints greet you, mm -hmm. especially those who are of Caesar's household. Paul was such a dynamic preacher and he was allowing God to use him so well until he preached to those in the government house. Lord, thank you for the preacher. Lord, thank you not only for Paul, but thank you for preachers today who are preaching because in the government house, we need somebody that can preach to the person that's in the government house. You see, Caesar, Caesar was the emperor. Caesar was the emperor. Therefore, Caesar was the one who controlled the government. Mm -hmm. Caesar was the one who, who carried out the state in the national, in this case, the national uh, regulations for the government. You see, some preachers will preach to those who are down and out. Mm -hmm. Some preachers will preach to those who are downtrodden. But some preachers have no problem with preaching to those who can put them in jail and who can take their lives. Mm -hmm. The average preacher will not die for anything, but we ought to be able to die on some of the hills that we find ourselves on. Paul is preaching, and he, in his preaching, even the emperor's household got saved. Mm -hmm. Even the emperor's, even Caesar's, Family members were saved. Let me tell you, if you are a preacher, if you are a teacher, you will preach and teach to anybody, anywhere. Mm -hmm. Whenever God unctions you, whenever God sets the stage for you, you ought to be willing to teach, to preach, and to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, we find ourselves considering situations that are there perfect for us. Many times people want a perfect situation before they bring Jesus into the scene. Let me tell you, God is opening the door for us to talk to people every single day we are out there. Yes. Every cashier, God is opening up a door. Every bagging boy, God is opening up a door. Every waiter, every bartender, God is opening a door for you to speak the name of Jesus. Paul didn't have a problem with it. He spoke even to the government's household, even to those who were in charge of the government. He says, he says, all the saints greet you, but especially, this word especially in the original Greek means chiefly. It, it means the greatest. It means particularly. He says, all the saints greet you, all those who are sacred, all those who are set apart. We greet you, we embrace you, we salute you. And then he says, but especially those who are of Caesar's household. Mm -hmm. Says to us today, he says, says to us today that he has witnessed to those even in the government house and he says, especially those in Caesar's house, chiefly those in Caesar's house, particularly those in Caesar's house, they greet you also. In other words, to the church at Philippi, even the people in the government, in the federal government, in the national government, has heard of the good things about you. And they greet you and they, they bid you welcome. They bid you farewell. They embrace you. It's a mighty good thing to be able to, to have the confidence that those in government will hear from you. You don't have to be a preacher to speak to those in the government. You just have to let the Lord use you. You don't have to be a Sunday school teacher, a Bible study teacher, 
to, to allow God to use you to lift up the name Jesus. He says, greet them in Christ Jesus' name. The word Christ means the anointed one, the Messiah, yes. the one who delivers us. Jesus here means the Lord. Paul is saying, not only is Jesus my Savior, but he's also my Lord which means to us that Christ has come into my life. He has saved me from a burning hell. Yes, but then I have allowed him to transform my life. He's not only my savior, but he's my Lord. He's my master. I'm doing what he would tell me to do. Yes. I'm acting the way he would tell me to act. I greet you in the name of Jesus the Christ. I greet you in the name of Christ Jesus. I greet you in the name of the anointed one, Jesus himself. He says, even the folk in Washington, <laughs> even the folk in the White House have heard of the great things you've been doing and how you've been ministering not only to me but to others even the folk in the White House, even the people in the State House, even the people in the Capitol have been hearing the great things. And for that, they are greeting you and saying, good job. He says, especially them, they, they greeting you and, and saying great things about you. What can those in the White House say about you? What can those in the capital say about you? What, what, what can those, what can those in, in the state house say about you? Do you have any friends that are politicians or public servants? Just remember, and Al Green, Congressman Al Green says it well, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. We have a lot of marches going on and people have been marching for, for weeks now. But Reverend Al Sharpton says it well. If you're marching and you don't vote, if you're marching and you're not voting, then you're just talking loud and saying nothing. We have to have our voices heard even in the White House. Even in the governor's mansion. Even at City Hall. Yes. Our voices have to be heard. Paul says that these people have heard so much of you, Philippians, that they greet you in the name of Jesus. Finally, he says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, all of you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Amen. The Apostle Paul says here that the grace, the joy, the pleasure, the thank you be with you. Not only should you begin your conversation with somebody by saluting them and telling them great things and looking forward to, to great things and encouraging them, you'd also greet them in the name of Jesus Christ when you're saying farewell to them. It's a sad day. It's a sad day. It's a sad day when a, when a, when a woman or a man been out working all day long walk to the door and people don't look forward to him coming home. He walks to the door, the dog runs out. He walks to the door, the children begin to hide. He walks through the door, his wife finds something else to do. It's a sad day. It's a sad day when you're not greeted well with joy and pleasure. This word grace means joy and pleasure. It means uh, everlasting joy that keeps going on from, from one day to the other. Paul is not only saying, I greet you, but he's also saying farewell. 
the grace of our Lord in Jesus, Jesus Christ, the, the joy of our Lord, the pleasure of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, be with you. In the times in which we're in right now, we need Jesus Amen. to be with us. Yes. What we're going through right now, when we, when we go from day to day, we need Jesus with us. You see, we needed him before now, but now the whole world knows that we need Jesus. Amen. The entire, the entire, the entire establishment, the world knows, it doesn't matter where the virus came from. We know it's devastating. Yes. Therefore, we need Jesus. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter who has who has addressed it and who held out now. We need Jesus to rescue us. Yes. Nearly 150, nearly 150,000 people in the United States alone, not to mention millions upon millions in the whole world is being wiped out. God has allowed the whole world to be shut down. Mm. Bars shut down. Restaurants shut down. Grocery stores shut down. Drug stores shut down. Airplanes shut down. Airplanes pulled out the sky. Buses not running. Only God can shut the whole world down yes. and ask the question, can you hear me now? Yes. God has a way of getting our attention, whether, whether he initiates it or he allows the devil to init initiate it or he is all in the middle of it through the initiation. God knows how to get our attention. Because you do know, regardless of who started what, where, and what, how it happened, God could have stopped it all. Yes, he could. But God got the whole world's attention all at one time. God got the whole world's attention. Yes. The question tonight is, what are you going to do with the attention that God has demanded? Yes. The question tonight is, will you, will you just keep doing business as usual? Or will you let God speak to you? Will you say, God, I, you got my attention now. God, teach me and show me what you would have me to do. And let me just share with you, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how long you've been saved. All of us can do better than what we've been doing. Yes. This is an opportunity. God has given us an opportunity if you got breath in your body, God has given you an opportunity to inhale and to exhale one more time mm -hmm. so we can get it right and do more for the Lord. Yes. Paul says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of our master, the grace of the one who died for us, the grace of our Lord and Savior, the anointed Christ, the anointed one himself. You see, people walk around here and they think because they can sing so well, they're anointed. And people are coming from miles around to hear them sing. God shut that down too. Mm -hmm. Athletes that run up and down the field, run up and down the floor, that have talents that no one else has, God shut that down too. Stars and entertainers, movie theaters, lights, cameras, action. God shut that down also. Can you hear me now? Now that God has our attention, matter of fact, churches, God shut that down too. I'm coming for I'm coming to you tonight from a remote location. Because God has shut the church down also. He says to us tonight that even with your buildings, with your fine marble, with your jasper walls, 
with your carpet on the floor. If, if I don't have your heart, I'll shut that down too. It's a warning. It's a warning. It's, he's getting our attention. The question tonight is, what will you do with what God has done to you? If you don't get it your way, will you get mad at God and shake your fists at him and say, God, I'm out of here? Well, the psalmist says in Psalm 73 that my, my feet had well nigh slipped. I had almost tripped out. My steps were almost gone. Because when I looked at the wicked, even in this pandemic, they still were prospering. When I looked at the wicked, they were still doing what they wanted to do. I almost lost my mind and lost my faith in God, what the psalmist says. He says that every time I try to do right, something hinders me. But I see the wicked, and the wicked is always progressing and always doing what they want to do. And they are prosperous, more prosperous than those of us who are saints. The sinners have and the saints have not. The psalmist said, my feet almost slipped, my, my, my steps were almost gone. But when I heard the word of God, what he says is, but when I went into the sanctuary of God, when I went into the sanctuary of God, then I realized that therein, was destruction. I realized then that my future was prosperous. Mm -hmm. My question to you tonight, question to you tonight is, what will you do when things don't go well for you? Yes. What will you do and what are you doing when you can't go out when you want to? You shouldn't party when you like it's 1999. How will you handle your relationship and your fellowship with God? Those, those of you who are not saved, Paul says in verse 23 of Philippians chapter 4, as he closes out this chapter, he says, he says to you, grace, grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's talking to believers. He's saying to you, in order for you to have this grace, in order for you to have this joy, in order for you to have this pleasure, you must be, you have to be, you got to be born again. Amen. And let me just share with you tonight, being born again is not running, jumping, shouting, speaking in other tongues, rolling across the floor, doing your dance. That's not being born again. These things you may do, that's left up to you and the Holy Spirit. But what you must do is repentantly believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Yes. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. Jesus Christ died over 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he died with you in mind. And those of us who, who have received him, we have the grace that Paul talks about. But those of us who have not received him, we cannot participate in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the pleasure, the joy that he talks about. What he's saying is he's talking to believers. And throughout this book, he said to believers, you need to walk circumspectively. You need to walk according to God. Yes. If you believe God, if you're walking in faith with God, you need to walk with the Lord and others ought to see this mind in you that's also in Christ Jesus. You have the mind and others will see it through your walking testimony, through your life that you live. But the group that I'm talking to tonight that are not saved, this group of people who, are, who have not confessed Christ as your Savior, this is your moment. Yes. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. Mama used to say, you know where you've been, but you don't know where you're going. Yes. 
What she was saying is don't make fun of other people because you just a dime or a dollar away from being homeless yourself. Millionaires bragged about their stocks and bonds. God shut that down also. Thousands, millions, billions of dollars lost. In this crisis, the more you had, the more you lost. <laughs> we need Jesus. So if you've not confessed Christ as your Savior, this is your moment. Paul ends this by saying, amen. He says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. You all. Then he says, amen. This word amen means it is so. This word amen means so be it. This word amen means may it be fulfilled. This word amen, when you begin with this word amen, it means surely and truly, most assuredly. But when you close it, you're saying, so be it. It is so. It is true. You can't say those words unless you're saved. I want to give you an opportunity to get to know Jesus tonight. Get to know him in the departing of your sins. Get to know him like never before. In Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah says, it was in the year that King Uzziah died that I also saw the Lord and I saw him like never before. I saw him high and lifted up. I saw his train fill the temple. I saw the doorpost move because God was real in my life. God may not be real to you tonight. And if God is not real to you tonight, you need to try Jesus. Because if you have not selected Jesus as your Savior and your Lord, you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. Hell was made for somebody. Let me just say to you tonight, you don't have to go to hell. Yes. You can go to heaven when you die. But the only way to get there is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The door of the church is open. I want to submit to you tonight, Jesus, by believing the story that he died on a hill called Calvary. That Jesus Christ, the one that was born by a virgin, mean men killed him even though he was innocent. Guilty men killed Jesus. He was an innocent man. They didn't take his life. He voluntarily gave his life up for you and for me. To say to you tonight, you can be born again tonight. You don't need a church. You just need faith in Jesus Christ. I submit to you tonight, trust Jesus as your Savior. Believe that he died over 2,000 years ago. Believe that they laid him in a borrowed tomb. Believe that early that third day morning he rose from the dead. The Bible teaches that if you can trust this simple story, you can be saved right here, right now, where you are. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You can come to Jesus right now. If you believe this story, this simple story, it's not hard, just a simple story. If you believe this story, why don't you do something with me? Bow your head and repeat after me and invite Jesus Christ into your life to be your Savior, and he will become your Lord. I hear you say, but preacher, you don't know what I've done. Let me just share with you, it doesn't matter what you've done. What matters is what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago. He died, he was buried, he rose, and he was seen by over 500 men at one time. If you can believe this true story to be true, 
Just join me in prayer and repeat after me and invite Christ into your life. And once you invite him to, into your life, you can be saved and go to heaven when you die. So join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. Make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us and receiving Jesus into your life. If you received him tonight, let me know by inboxing me and let me know that you received Jesus Christ on this broadcast. And for those of you who don't have a church home or are in between church homes, I recommend this one, the New Beginning Church, where you can join and be a part of this glorious body of Christ. Send me a message by way of inbox and let me know that you want to join and become a member of the New Beginning Church, where you can exercise your gifts in the Lord and the Lord can, can be with you and you with him, and where you can fellowship with the saints of God. We don't know, no one knows when we'll be able to get back in church, but we're looking forward to that great day when we can come together again and celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're looking forward to the day that we can celebrate again where, where we can celebrate the great conquering King of Calvary, Jesus himself, the one who gave his life for us so that we can toe the line, so that we can be saved again. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this service. Please remember next week we'll be covering the entire book of Philippians. And as we cover the entire book of Philippians, we want to do so by you sending me two questions per person. Two questions. Inbox me two questions. Don't send me three. Don't send me one. Send me two questions per person. Uh, by Monday, please have them in. And by Monday, Monday night or so, send, send me those questions by Monday night. And then um, I'll be prepared to answer them live on Wednesday. I'm looking forward to you being a part of, of our service on next Wednesday by way of questions and answers. And these questions will only come from the book of Philippians. <laughs> only from the book of Philippians. And uh, we'll look forward to answering, answering those questions. It is time for offering. It is offering time. Hallelujah. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. We got an opportunity to give to the Lord. And certainly, even though we're not in church, we ought to always continue to give our tithes, offering, and our sacrificial gifts to the Lord. Amen. Amen. We have three ways as of tonight. We have three ways that you can give uh, unto the Lord. Number one is our normal cash app. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. You can give unto the Lord by uh, giving to cash tag NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC S O U L S NBC Souls. Our new way of giving starting tonight is by Zelle. You can give by Zelle. Uh, the email address to give by Zelle is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. You can give by way of Zelle. Lifting.jesus. Lifting, like you're lifting something. You lift, we're going to lift up Jesus, right? So we're lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your offering to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Uh, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. We'll be glad to, to receive your offering and give you credit for it. So please join us as we 
uh, join the Lord where the Lord is at work and what God is, is doing, doing with us. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us. We're glad that you have come to join us here at the New Beginning Church. And we're looking forward to you being a part of our service on a regular basis. And you can join us on, on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And you can also join us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. is our Sunday school time. And you can also join us at 1045 for our worship service on our live broadcast. And again, tonight, as you have joined tonight on a Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m., you can join us for our Bible study. Again, thank you so much for being a part of our service. Thank you for being with us. We want to continue to lift up those who are in need on tonight. Let's lift up each other's families. Uh, make sure that we pray for those who are suffering from this dreadful disease, this dreadful virus. Continue to lift up each other. Continue to lift up our family. And please, ma'am, please, sir, lift up our nation and our world. Le lift up every leader and every person. Let's don't talk about it. Let's do two things. Let's pray about it and let's vote about it. <laughs> let's pray about it and let's vote about it. If we pray and we vote, we would have done all that we can do. And God will do the rest. I guarantee you God is able to make all grace abound unto us. So again, your homework assignment is to send me two questions from the book of Philippians, two questions from the book of Philippians, only the book of Philippians. And we will answer those questions live next week as we continue to, to do our Bible study. And that will carry us up to July 1st. July 1st is next Wednesday. And then on July 8th, we will begin with the book of Colossians. We will be in the book of Colossians on July 8th. Please join us. Go ahead and get prepared. Have your homework assignment done and continue to join us here live. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless our nation, bless our world, bless our leadership. We pray, Father God, that you bless us to be more concerned about what you're doing than what others are doing. Lord, we ask you to heal our land. You promised that if, I, if your people, meaning us, Lord, would turn from our wicked ways, if your people would, would turn from what we, we're used to doing. Lord, you said, if my people, the ones who are called according to your name, would humble themselves and pray, seek your face, God, you promised you would heal the land as we turn from our wicked ways. Lord, we ask you to heal the land. Lord, we ask you to heal us from disease. We ask you to heal us from pestilence. We ask you to heal us from injustice. Lord, we ask you to heal the land. And Lord, we ask you to do it in such a manner that every man, woman, boy, and girl will know that it was only the Lord who was able to do it. Lord, you got us at a point now where we have to depend on you. Thank you, Lord, for being with us even in this terrible time. Thank you for being with us, Father God, as we go through things from day to day. And Lord, we ask you to keep us as only you can. Bless us, Lord, as only you can. We repent of our sins. We ask you, Father, to make us whole again. In the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Here at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.